Morning folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. What I thought I'd talk about with you a little bit this morning to go along with our camp cooking series, we had talked about different types of cooking implements and fire irons and things like that. And I've done videos in the past on different types of pots and containers. And we'll do a little bit more about that in a future video. But I thought what we'd talk about today is a little bit about meat processing and meat processing tools. That's one of the things that you're going to want to be able to do in camp whether it's a short-term or a long-term camp, you're going to want to be able to process hunted and trapped meat. So let's talk about some of those things and some of the minimums that you would need and possibly some of the maximums. Now, obviously, you can process most small game with nothing but a pocket knife. It's a no-brainer. If you got an ax to cut off the feet and the head and things like that, it makes it real, real easy. When you get into a little bit larger game or you get into fish and things like that, then it may take a little bit different tools, but you can get by with very, very little very easily. But I want to talk to you a little bit today about how you smooth it in both a short-term and a longer-term scenario. So let's walk through a couple different scenarios of tools here because I've really got what I would call, again, going back to those five rules again, the five essential tools that I would carry almost any time for even a shorter-term camp for like a week. And then I have a set of tools that I would carry if we were going into more of a permanent camp where I was going to be doing lots and lots of cooking and meat prep. So we'll look at both of those sets of tools now. And some of them are going to overlap and some of them are things that you're going to carry most of the time anyway. Stay with me. Okay, so let's first talk about things that should overlap within your kit anyway. I've spoken many times about carrying a butcher style knife on your hip as your sheath knife. And this $3 butcher knife right here that I got at a yard sale has been a trusted knife to me for quite a long time. And it will do most butchering type tasks that you might use something like an old hickory butcher knife for, or that you may use some type of big buffalo skinner like this old hickory or a green river of some sort. This tool will do all of those things as well as all the things I need to do for processing wood and normal camp chores. So it makes a good choice for a belt knife and overlaps very well. A folding knife of some sort, like this Case Hunter, which is my preference, gives you the ability of having two blades. You have one fairly stout blade that you can use for boning and for some of your skinning, and then you also have a thinner blade that's a little bit more flexible, that's more of a fillet-type blade or a fine cutting blade. So that gives you two options in your pocket that will also do fine carving work, along with a belt knife to give you a good variety of blades for processing meat. Okay, an ax will always be an asset to you and it takes the place of a larger cleaver that you might carry in a longer term camp. So all those type things can be done with your ax from cutting off feet, cutting off heads, cutting through sternums and things like that. If you're trying to open up a chest cavity, all those things can be done with an ax very, very easily. So those three tools are tools that you would probably have on you anyway. Okay. So my three main tools are basically your EDC type stuff. This is stuff I carry all the time. Now, if I'm going to add something to that or a couple implements to that for a short-term camp, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an ULU or what's called a hash knife made out of a high carbon steel blade. It's very, very sharp. It's great for skinning tasks on larger game if I were going into a deer camp or something like that for removing the hide. And then it's also very good for processing chunk meat and things like that for stews or dicing up vegetables. So it gives me that thin blade ability without having to use my pocket knife or my larger butcher knife to be able to do that and the ability to give me a good skinning tool that's much, much faster and easier to control than either a knife or an ax would be if I'm trying to get the hide off a larger animal very quickly. So the last of the five tools that I would probably add for a short term camp would probably be some type of a heavy metal fork. And that could be one side of my squirrel cooker. I carry a squirrel cooker quite a bit in a blanket roll. Or it could just be a metal fork like the one I forged the other day. But something that I can hold chunks of meat down, like roast down with for carving them and cutting slabs off of them. Something that I can cook meat over the fire if I want to. And something that also will allow me to eat off of it is always going to be a bonus. All right, so going back, obviously the knife on your hip should be able to do all of these tasks that we're talking about other than maybe cook meat over the fire, hold meat down, and a green stick will do the job for you in a pinch. 
So that belt knife is the most important. If I add that pocket knife, now I've got the versatility of two different blades, two different styles of cutting blades that I can use for other tasks. If I have the axe, I have that chopping ability that I would have with a meat cleaver. And then if I add the ulu, I have just another versatile tool to help me remove hides faster, dice and slice quicker, and it's just an easy, versatile, lightweight tool that I can carry with me that will round out this five-piece meat processing set and overlap with a lot of the things that I'm already carrying. So now let's talk about things that we might want in a longer term camp. We're going out for you know, a couple, three weeks maybe to a deer camp or a hunting camp out in the mountains or out in the woods somewhere. And we know we're going to be processing a lot of game. We're going to be cooking a lot of food. And we've got the room by conveyance or by the use of conveyance to carry more implements than just what we can throw into our pack. Now we might need to carry a few other things or want to carry a few other things. We may want a large meat cleaver like this keen cutter. We may want a large chef type cooking knife like this old Russell Green River. We may want a smaller boning type knife with a flexible blade like this Russell Green River. That way we save the implements that we have on our belt for one purpose. These are used for a specific purpose of processing meat all the time. We could carry an old hickory butcher knife or a Green River or old hickory type buffalo skinning type knife for larger gain that gives us that curved ulu style blade. And then some type of a saw is always going to be handy. Now we may carry our folding saw with us all the time. We may have a folding buck saw with us. We may have a buck saw that has a boning or a bone cutting blade like this saw has on it now. And again, that goes back to the versatility of your kit that we've talked about lots and lots of times when it comes to saws. I see people all the time asking questions on which saw should I buy if I want to buy a folding saw. And I go back to Baco Laplander every time because the teeth are not near as aggressive as a lot of the newer saws. I've never broken one, and I can do finer cutting, like bone cutting, fine notch cutting, and things like that with the Baco that you're never going to do with an aggressive green woodworking blade or pruning blade. So make sure that whatever saw you're carrying, if you want to use that in your meat processing, it's going to have to have fairly fine teeth, and a Baco Laplander has about as coarse of teeth that you're going to get away with for cutting bone. And then I'm going to want some implements for maintaining these tools, obviously, like a ceramic rod, like a butcher's steel, a carborundum stone. Those things will obviously go into this kit for longer term so that I can keep these tools nice and sharp. And they could be additions to some of these other things, like the ulu would go in that kit. But my axe and my belt knife and my pocket knife are going to stay over here and they're going to be used for their intended purpose and not necessarily for processing meat because I've got a set of dedicated meat processing tools in camp for that. But this gives you a very, very well-rounded set of meat processing tools that you can use either at home in the homestead or in a longer-term camp environment that you can process any meat you want to process with these few tools right here. And there's not that many. You've got about three or four different styles of knives, three, three styles and a cleaver. You've got an ulu and a bone saw and something to maintain those tools with and you can do anything you need to do with just those tools very very easily. So let's talk to cost for a minute because the majority of this stuff is things that I've bought used. In fact I think everything sitting right here was bought used. None of it was bought brand new. The only thing that was brand new on this whole table is this axe. Everything else was bought used. So I didn't pay a lot of money for it. I don't think there's one tool or one implement on this table that I paid over twenty dollars for. Even at antique mall prices, I didn't pay over 20 bucks for any one of these implements. You don't have to spend a lot of money to do it. You just got to be particular in what you buy. King Cutter, Russell Green River, Old Hickory, Ontario. Those are good brands of tools for culinary type applications. So remember that when you're out looking at tools and looking for things that you want to buy or invest your money in as far as a used tool goes because these type implements are very, very easy to find used and you don't need to buy them brand new necessarily. All right, folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. I appreciate you joining me for this quick video today. Just remember that the tools that you carry every day will do lots for you if you understand how to properly use the tool and the multifunctionality of what you choose to put into your kit. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business. 
for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends, and I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.